Hello all, my name is Emmanuel Rivera, and I'm going to be one of your instructors for the Neurobiology of Somatosensation class together with my partner, Raúl Ramos. As part of our class, we'll be offering a series of weekly professional development videos, starting with this one titled The Sections of a Research Article. In this short intervention, I would like to briefly tell you about the different sections of a research article, what you can expect to obtain from each one of those parts, and lastly, the approach with which I would recommend to navigate a research paper. Before starting to dive deeply into the paper, you should feel free to skim it over. Take a look at the abstract, look at the plots in the results section, thinking about the main techniques and main findings of the article, then briefly look over the discussion to see what are the main claims that the authors are making. Doing this will allow you to make a plan and determine how much time and effort you will be devoting to studying and fully understanding the paper. Let's start with the abstract. The abstract is a brief summary of the research paper. In this section, the authors will give us the context of the article, telling us what was and wasn't known about the question of interest. The abstract will also be telling us about the main technical approaches used to answer the question of interest of the study, and it will be followed by what were the main findings obtained from utilizing those approaches. The abstract will be finalized with a brief discussion statement in which the authors will tell us about the main take-home message of the paper and the general relevance of their study. All of this will be contained within approximately less than 250 words. In the introduction, the authors will aim to put us up to date with what is known in the field about the research topic and doing somewhat of a review of the current literature. They will be describing the knowledge gaps, meaning what is yet to be answered. And lastly, the authors will highlight the way in which they will aim to fill those gaps with the approaches and results to be presented in the article. The results section is the core of the paper. This is where the actual findings are being shown. And for the purpose of our class, I would advise to use this as a guideline when presenting figures for discussions with us. Okay, so how to do this? Let's start by paying attention to the axis and units. And let's take panel D as an example. Without knowing anything about the experiments and by just looking at the axis and units, I can tell that first, certain pressure is being applied to the preparation. I know this because I observe a unit that says 20 millimeters of mercury. Since I also observe a scale of 5 picoamps, I can tell that the stimuli is causing certain current as a response, and that this response is being recorded through a certain amount of time because in the x-axis we observe that they are showing time in milliseconds. Now, if we go to panel E, we can observe that the manipulation is being performed to two groups, a control group or another group named the MPS, and we can see that they are showing responses as currents because in the y-axis we see that it says IMAX or maximum currents with units of picoamps. All of this is information that I can know by just looking at the plot without even looking at the text. However, we have a figure legend and the figure legend will tell us more information. First, it will briefly describe what was done to obtain each result in terms of the technique, what tissue was used, etc. And it would also tell us specifically what is being shown in each panel. At this point, I would also advise you to take notes of first, what was the question that the authors were seeking to answer in each panel? And second, do you consider that the authors achieved the goal with each experiment? At this point, you can allow yourself to be critical and don't take the results as given. The discussion is a broader summary of the presented research. Here, the authors will highlight their conclusions and explain whether their experiments satisfy their predictions or not. They will also bring up remaining gaps, which means what is yet to be answered, followed by potential future directions that could seek to fill those remaining knowledge gaps. 
Lastly, in this section, the authors will also highlight the relevance of their results to the scientific community as a whole and how these will advance their specific field of study. Something that is becoming more and more common are visual or graphical abstracts. However, not all papers have one. It is a visual model connecting the current findings with the previous knowledge of the system under study. When studying a paper, looking at the visual abstract is a good way to determine whether or not you understood what the authors are claiming. As a final remark, I would like to invite you to use this as a guideline for our discussion and structure your understanding in such a way that you can communicate it to others. Pay attention not only to what you understood, but also what other relevant information may be necessary for the audience to understand the importance of the findings.